So please get your holy bibles ready this is back to the bible today we're about to learn about worship true worship so please get your holy bibles ready please get your holy bibles ready god bless you please get your holy bibles ready share the video we're about to talk about worship true worship god bless you my mercy hey god bless you Vive. God bless you so much. Please get your Holy Bibles ready. Get your Bibles and your notepads ready. We're about to learn about true worship. Amen. We're about to learn about true worship. God bless you. Yeah. Get your Bible and your notepad ready so you can write something down. We're about to learn about true worship. Amen. I love this song. Somebody said I have a weird voice, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try singing. Where is the lamb? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that when I have your way. Please share the video, share the video. God bless you so much. In two minutes, we will go straight into the word of God. In two minutes, we will go into the straight of the word of God. Just worship God wherever you are. Just bless God. Just bless God wherever you are. In Him is life, and the life is the light of the world. The sinners run to Him, and they are saved. If I'm living, it is by Your grace. Yes, if there's life in me, it is by Your grace. If I'm still working, it's by grace. In blessing, I am blessed by Your grace. Yes, yes I'm making a joyful noise, right? Without voice. God bless you, Mr. Samuel Apriya. God bless you, man of God. God bless you, Madina, my Missy, everybody that is watching me. God bless you. We're about to go into the Word of God. Today we want to learn about worship. What is worship? What is true worship? Yeah, I Him is life, and the life is the light of the world. Sinners run to Him, and we get saved. If I live, it is by Your grace. If I'm living, it is by Your grace. If I'm still working, it is by Your grace. If I have abundance of blessing, it is by Your grace. So I'll not give my praise, my worship to any party. No river. No, King. It is you. It is you. It is you, Jesus. And you won't be there no more. Oh, come on, Father. This is Father. You deserve our praise. You deserve our worship. God bless you. Please get your holy Bibles. Get your holy Bibles. Search for worship instrumentals. Get your Holy Bibles ready. We are going straight into the Word of God. We are going straight into the Word of God. Amen. 
We are going straight into the Word of God. And guess what? Today we're about to learn about worship. True worship. Amen. We're about to learn about true worship. What is true worship? You know, people, most, most times when we talk about people, I mean, when we talk about worship, God bless you, my brother. God bless you, Aliu. God bless you so much. I'm so proud of you, my brother, Aliu. God bless you. Graham, mind of God, God bless you. Everybody, God bless you. Patience, God bless you. Medina, everybody, God bless you. We're about to learn about true worship. You know, usually when we talk about worship, uh, what comes to our mind is music. You know, when we talk about worship, everybody thinks it is about slow music. That is that is the mindset of people. That when we talk about worship, it is slow music. But today, by the grace of God, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God uses us to be a blessing to you. Amen. I pray that today, by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit of God teaches all of us what true worship is. You see, true worship transcends, it goes beyond music. Amen. True worship goes beyond slow music. Amen. You know, and so today, what is the Bible saying about true worship? What is the Bible saying about true worship? But before we do, we cannot do anything without the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. We cannot do anything without activating the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. You know, one time, I think a couple of years ago, somebody asked me, why do you have to pray to invite the presence of God? No, it is, listen, when you go for a function and there are dignitaries there, what you do is to recognize them, amen. You recognize their presence. It doesn't mean that we don't have the Holy Spirit. We do have the Holy Spirit, but it's a way of showing him respect. It's a way of activating his presence. It's a way of giving him the platform. Amen. So there is nothing wrong in calling for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even Jesus, when he was praying, he said, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so today, I want you to pray just for one minute. You want to pray and invite the Holy Spirit of God. That so that, you know, you don't want to listen to man. You don't want to listen to things that I think, you know, is good. But let the words that will come be from the Holy Spirit of God. Let every teaching, let this teaching be inspired by the Spirit of the living God. Just pray, open up your mouth and invite the Holy Spirit of God. The Father, I have joined because I want to hear your voice, not the voice of earnest. I want to hear Jesus, your voice. Open up your mouth, open up your mouth wherever you are. Like a bro, shake a da bro, shake a da brata. Liba turi de bro, shake a da brata. Somebody open up your mouth, just pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. Ma shake a ba da ba. Lady bro, shake a da da bro, shake a da da bra, shake a da da brata. Le ba da da bro, shake a da brata. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. And say, Holy Spirit, minister to me. Let the words that come be your words, Lord. I don't want to hear the words of men. I want to hear your voice, Lord Jesus. Open up your mouth and please pray. Because we are about to hear about worship. We are about to learn about true worship. It is a very delicate topic. It's a very important topic. You don't want to hear what I think I know. But pray the Spirit of God. I want to hear your voice, Lord. I want to hear your voice. Speak through this servant. Open up your mouth and pray that the Holy Spirit of God ministers to you. That it will not be my voice. Tell him that, Father, I want to know about worship. What is true? True worship. Minister to me about true worship. Open up your mouth. Lady bro, shake a da bra, shake a da brata. Lady bro, shake a da bra, shake a ba ba ba. Lady bro, shake a da bra, shake a da bra. True worship, Holy Spirit, we pray that you minister to us, Lord. Minister to us, Lord. Lady bro, shake a ba 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 ba. Search for Jesus at the center instrumentals. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen. Now, I want you to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, committing your environment into the hands of God, amen. You want to commit your environment into the hands of God. You want to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. One second, please. One second, please.
okay god bless you sorry about that sorry about that i just wanted to get um i just want to play my song my favorite song jesus center amen jesus at the center of it all so as the song is playing you want to pray and commit your environment into the hands of god you want to pray the Bible. Jesus speaks about sowing seeds. You know, there are fertile lands and there are lands that the seeds may be placed on, but nothing will come out. So you want to commit your environment to the hands of God. The Father, let me receive the word of God. Prepare me to receive. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus, the Father, as the word is coming, let him worship. Say, Father, be the center of it all. Jesus. Jesus said, the center of it all. Yes, Lord. From, From beginning to the end, end, it will always be, it's always, always been you, Jesus. Open up your mouth and pray that Lord Jesus be the center. Jesus, be the center of this nation. Yes, Lord. Nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you are the center, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, you are the center. Yes. Everything involves around you. Yes. Jesus. Somebody, that is your prayer. You are praying that Father be the center. Jesus, be the center of my life. Yes, be the center of my life, Lord Jesus. Let it be your prayer. Jesus be the center of my life. Say, Lord Jesus, be the center of this teaching from beginning to the end. It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, be the center. Yes, Lord. Nothing else matters. Yes. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you are the same. Everything revolves around you, Lord. Everything revolves around. Yes, Jesus. Jesus, you. Yes, Lord. And from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about from my heart to the heavens, from my heart to the heavens. Yes, Lord, Jesus be the center. From my heart, let it be your prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, be the center. I am joined because I want to hear the voice of Jesus, not the voice of Ernest. The Lord Jesus, I have joined because I, I want to hear your voice, Lord. Not the voice of Ernest. Open up your mouth and pray. To the heavens, Jesus be the center, Lord. All about you. Yes, it's all about you. Yes, Lord. So Jesus be the center of your church the lord jesus be the center of your church what, what we're doing right now jesus father we invite your presence be the center let it not be the voice of earnest but holy spirit minister through me lord yes lord every knee will bow every tongue shall confess you jesus every tongue shall confess you jesus Wherever you are, say Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord.
God bless you. Jesus is definitely the center of whatever we're doing right now. Um, I want you to get your Holy Bibles. We want to talk about worship. Worship. You see, um, I want this to be very interactive, okay? I want this to be very interactive. So, I just want to ask you a question. What is your favorite worship song? Just type it. What is your favorite worship song? What is your favorite worship song? Come on. Type it. I want to hear from you. What is your favorite, your all-time favorite worship song? Somebody should just type, what is your all-time favorite worship song? Come on. Which one is your favorite worship song? Amen. Your favorite, all-time favorite worship song. Which one is that? God bless you, Ananapia, man of God. God bless you so much. Jesus is the center. I want us to turn our Bibles to um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 and today um, today we're talking about worship true worship amen God bless you man of God Nelson God bless you all the men women of God watching God bless you so much today we just want to know we just want to learn about true worship what true worship is amen um, you know most of the time when we talk about worship what comes to our mind is a song what is your favorite worship you know, oh, he's coming to lead worship. This is a worship leader. This is a true worshiper. He's a worshiper. You are a worshiper. Yeah, he sings good. He's a, oh, this guy, oh, you don't know him. He's a worshiper. But today, the question is, what is true worship? What is true worship? Yes, yeah, somebody has given their, somebody has given their um, best, their favorite worship. This is the center. What is your worship? What is your favorite worship song? Somebody said, Holy, Holy Are You Lord by Terry McAmmon. Yes. But today, what is worship? What is true worship? Let's first look at Colossians chapter 3. God bless you, man of God. Apostle, God bless you. Akruman son, God bless you. Man of God, Nelson. Everybody watching me, God bless you. What is true worship? What is true worship? Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Colossians 3, 23. One second, please. Jesus is the center. Colossians 3, 23. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. God bless you. Please, I want you to take notes down. So that, you know, when, when it is done, when we are done, you can go back to the Bible and verify. Colossians 3, 23. Amen. Please, this is back to the Bible. I'm reading from my iPad so that, you know, it will be faster. But I have my Bible with me. Whenever, 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 without humility, whenever you come to watch me, please make sure you have your Bible on you. You know, because by the grace of God, we don't do anything without the Word of God. Whenever you come to watch me, even if it's a funny video, please get your Bible. You never know. Amen. God bless you. So Colossians 3.23. Today we are learning about true worship. So I want you to open your heart, open your spirit, and download from the Word of God so that you add to what you already know. Amen. We are all learning true worship. Colossians 3, 23. Amen. I'm, I, I will start from 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Not with eye service, not with eye service, as men pleases, don't please men, but in singleness of hearts, fearing God. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Oh, man of God, that is, that is also my favorite, Lamb of God, that is also one of my favorite songs. Amen. Okay. And whatsoever you do, 23, do it heartedly as to the Lord and not unto men. 
Some versions will say, whatever you do, do it with your heart as though you are working for the Lord. You know, whatever. So that's the first key you must get. You know, whatever you do, God bless you. Um, my, 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 my brother, my friend, amen. Um, Dr. Ntiako, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. He said, so whatever you do, whatever you do, do it from your heart. So number one, worship must come from your heart. And it must be as though you are working for God. Now somebody might question, why, why are you saying that is worship? You know, so let's go to the Bible. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 from 1 to 2 to know what true worship is. And then we'll go back to another scripture and we apply it to our lives. Amen. So that we can find out what true worship is. Hallelujah. Just imagine, just imagine you have two children. Just imagine you have two children. And one of them comes to you. One of them comes to you and just be singing to you. But the other one is working for you. Whose work would you appreciate? The one singing to you or the one that is doing what you want? The one that is working for you? Amen. Anyway, so Apostle Paul, you know, just to get, just to get a background of Paul. Paul, we all know, was Saul. He, he you know, he was, he was, he was, you know, into Ju Judaism. So Paul persecuting Christians, to him, he thought he was working for God. So don't think Paul was a criminal. Paul didn't do that as a criminal with a criminal mindset. He wasn't killing people from, from a criminal's mindset. No. Amen. Paul was killing the he was persecuting people because he thought it was his form of worshiping God. It was it is part of the Judaism. So Paul persecuting the Christians is a form of worshiping God because he thought he was defending God. He thought the followers of Jesus were followers of a false prophet. And so he was going, going all out to serve God, to kill them for God. That's what he thought. Now, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 9 that Paul, when he was on his way to Damascus, he encountered Jesus. He encountered Jesus, not just a strange power, but he encountered Jesus. He became blind for three days. And the verse 3 of Acts chapter 9, the Bible says for three days he was without food or water. He was fasting. He had seen visions. So he went. We all know the story. We all know this is just the background of Paul. Now, so Paul since then was commissioned to work for God. You know, he began serving for God. I mean, serving the Lord. He began working for God. So Paul, Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12 is teaching us what worship is. What worship is. Amen. So let's turn our Bibles to the book of Romans chapter, chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. But remember what we just read in Colossians 3.23. That whatever you do, let it come from your heart. You know, the verse 22 says, not as I see, it's not, not, you know, for people to see. But to please God, let it come from your heart. Whatever I'm doing, you see, like me coming on Facebook Live, if it is just for people to see that hey, you can do something, God sees. But if my heart is for is for is to draw people to God, God also sees. Whatever you do, let it please God. Let it come from your heart. Amen. Let it come from your heart. Like I was telling somebody last last night that me wake, me waking up at this time because the way my work schedule is, this time is my night time. I'm supposed to be sleeping around this time because I work overnight. I work mostly overnight. So for me to be doing the Facebook Live is a big sacrifice. Why? Because for my heart, I believe that this is my way of worshiping God. Amen. So what is true worship? Romans 12, chapter 1. Chapters 1 and 2. I mean, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Amen. True worship. True worship. One second, please. Romans 12. So please turn your Bibles to the book of Romans 12. Amen. What is true worship? Worship goes beyond singing a song. So let's say, if, let's say if worship was just singing a song, if worship was just a song, then don't you think that God will be pleased with only those with beautiful songs, I mean beautiful voices? If worship was just a song, then somebody like me, God will never be pleased with my, with my worship because guess what? My voice is as weird as whatever you can think of. 
Amen. But worship goes beyond singing. So Romans 12, 1 to 2. Okay. Romans 12, 1 to 2. I know we all know this, but like I always say, anytime a Bible verse is coming, anytime a, a Bible verse is mentioned, no matter how well you know it, just go back to the Bible and read it. Because at that moment, God may be giving you a new revelation. So what is true worship? Holy Spirit, I pray that you minister through me. Bless your people, Lord. Open up our spirits. Open up our souls. Open up our hearts and our minds. Let us grab your word. Let it be a seed that will bear fruits in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye, you, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which, your, which is your reasonable act of service or worship. Yes. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, Holy and pleasing to the Lord. Amen. To God. This is your true and proper worship. So your true and proper worship is to number one, offer your bodies. Your true and your proper worship, the best form of worship is when you offer your body. According to Romans 12, chapter 1. Now, why is that? God is spirit. John 4, 24. God, we know, is manifesting himself as a spirit. Jesus said, for God is spirit, and they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. You know, they that worship God must do so in spirit. So because God is spirit, his work is looking for bodies, flesh, to use. Amen. Because God is spirit, He's looking for bodies to use. So Apostle Paul is begging you and I. He said, I beg you by the message of God that if there's any worship you want to give God, it is first to give him your body. If there is any worship you want to give God, it's, it's, not, about, it's not just about singing. Singing is an activity of worship. True worship is when you first offer your body unto the Lord. So the first thing you do is to offer your body. Your first, you know, your first way of worshiping God is to first offer your body. That is why I said true worship is working for God. We will get there very soon. So number one, you offer your body. For instance, I live, I live in my house alone. So for instance, if somebody, let, let's say you have a house, and, and, and you are expecting a visitor. I always use this example. If you have a house and you are expecting a visitor, what you do is to first choose a room for the visitor. If you have a guest room, you choose the room for that person. You see? So you choose, you offering your body is just like give offering a room to the visitor. Amen. So your first form of worship, your first form of serving your first form of true worship is when you offer your body to the Lord. Amen. Now, now when the, before the visitor comes to your house, after you've chosen which room you give them, the next thing you do is to clean the room. Right? No matter, no matter how clean the, room, the house is, you, you make sure that everything is in place. Right, you make sure that you put things in order. So that is that is the second step. That is why that is why Paul said, "Holy, holy, holy, and acceptable, holy." So the second form of worship is to maintain holiness, cleanliness. Amen. So when you offer your body to God, it's not enough to say, "Father, use me." There must be cleanliness holiness purity amen so the second form of worship is that after you've offered the room after you've offered your body to god now the next thing you do is to make sure that that body is cleansed amen so your first 
form your first activity of worship is to offer your body to the lord happy birthday pastor lizzie god bless you happy birthday we pray that god will continue to increase you god bless you we love you amen so worship your first i mean your first form of worship according to romans 12 is to offer your body to the lord now your second form madina i hope you are writing i hope somebody is writing i want to see it. so your second form of worship is to maintain cleanliness or holiness amen so paul said i beg you by the mercies of god that you offer your body as a living sacrifice amen so the first the first key is the first key is that your worship must be you giving your body to jesus to god number two your second key is that there must be holiness there must be cleanliness amen now the third key of worship is sacrifice sacrifice your third form of worship is sacrifice now if you know if the stranger if the visitor comes to your house and you give them the room for the period of time that they will be in that room, you have sacrificed that room to them. For the period, as long as they live in that house, that room has been sacrificed, dedicated to them. You see, when you sacrifice, it is for the benefit of the beneficiary. Anything that is sacrificed is for the consumption of the beneficiary. Let's say, oops, hold on. Let's say I was going to take a watch. Let's say, let's say I take this watch and I give it to man of God, Nelson. Let's say I give it to man of God, Nelson. I say, I've offered this watch to you. Now, whatever he does with the watch must not be my concern. I shouldn't tell him that wear this watch on Sundays or wear this watch on Fridays or treat this watch well. No. That is sacrifice. When you sacrifice, you cannot complain. When you sacrifice, you cannot control. You see, the mistake a lot of people make is that we, we, we avail ourselves to God. We tell God, the Father, we say, I give myself to you to use. But the problem we have is the sacrifice part of it. You want to tell God how to use us. You want to tell God that use me as a prophet. Use me as an apostle. Use me to preach. But maybe God wants to use you as an usher. Maybe God wants to use you to direct traffic at the parking lot. So Paul is teaching us that your best form of worship is number one, you give your body to Jesus. Number two, you maintain cleanliness, holiness, purity amen and number three your body that you have given to him must be a sacrifice you know don't look back don't try to manipulate god don't try to determine what god does with you that is sacrifice amen i hope you are learning something so please write that down the third key is sacrifice so your best form of worship is that i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you offer your bodies as so you offer your body to god as a living sacrifice and the sacrifice must be holy don't just say you know we all most of us for most of us fall short to this because we sacrifice ourselves to god we give our bodies to god we want god to use us and still we are not maintaining holiness we are not maintaining cleanliness we are messing up we are sinning. We are doing all bad, all stuff, all kind of bad things. We are angry. We are bitter. We are sad. So, so your best form of worship is you giving yourself to God for God to use use your body, and that body, God bless you. 
the body you have gi you are giving to the Lord to use, you know, you have to know that it is a sacrifice. And so if you've given yourself to the Lord as a sacrifice, you may be a pastor, you may be an apostle, but maybe at a point in time, you may be need your services may be needed to clean the toilet. Your services may be needed to direct traffic. Your services may be needed as an usher. Don't say because of this position that I hold, uh, because of because I am this, because I am that. Guess what? I cannot do that. No, no, no. Personally, personally, by the grace of God, anytime I travel to a different country or to a different place to minister, when I come back to my church, you know what I do? When I come, I, you know, when I come back to my church, I try to go back, lower myself back. If the drama is not there, I'll go sit down and play. I will shoot videos. I will take pictures. I don't always have to be holding the microphone. Why? Because I have offered myself to God. Even yesterday I showed videos at church. Does it take my anointing from me? No. Does it take my beauty from me? I think I, I'm good looking. Does it take anything from me? No. Because I've offered myself as a living sacrifice. When you offer yourself as a living sacrifice, you cannot get offended. You think, you think, you think it is every phone call that I receive that I want to receive? You think it is everybody that I pray for that I want to pray for? You think it is everybody that I pray with that I want to pray with? No. No. Some people will hurt you. Some people are ungrateful. Some people take advantage of you. Sometimes I'll be sleeping and people will call. But guess what? I have to take it. Why? Because I've sacrificed myself. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm just using myself as an example. I also fall short in so many different ways. But what I'm saying is that, you know, your true form of worship is not singing slow song. Worship, singing slow song, is just an activity of worship. So are you telling me that people that are dumb, people that can't speak, they can't worship God? If, if worship was just about music, how about those that can't speak? How would they worship God? Worship, remember, is from the hearts. Worship, remember, is whatever you do, do unto the Lord. Colossians 3.23. Therefore, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, not unto men. When you are worshiping, don't look at men. Don't do anything. Don't work for God just to please men. Work for God to please God. Many times I've had many, many instances where people have tried to stop me, even especially the Facebook life. They said, don't do it. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for Jesus. I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it to bless God. I'm doing it, that, I'm doing it to draw people to the Lord. I'm doing it to draw people closer to Jesus. And so if you know, you know, if you know how you, are, you want to worship God, that is why you go to church, you know, that's how you go to church and people will be laying on the floor because they know the depth of their worship. They know how deep, they know what they are doing. And so maybe you may be thinking about your beautiful outfit and so you don't want to, you don't want to lay on the floor. That is good for you. That is up to you. And that is how people are. They, 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 they limit their services in the kingdom of God to the four corners of the church. No. But true worship is to sacrifice your body, your life to the Lord. True worship is not just singing, ladies and gentlemen. Singing songs are just an activity of worship. So what is Paul saying? Please pay, post it again. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, you, even listen, even though you may sin, you may be a sinner, even, even though you may you may have some shortcomings, just all Jesus is looking for, all the Lord is looking for is your body. Because he is a spirit and he can only operate. He can the way God has made the life, the universe, the spirit of God, and even the spirit of death who can only operate through available vessels, through flesh. And remember, you are spirit too. That's why Jesus said, 
they that worship God must do so in spirit because you are a spirit. You are a spirit and and God is also a spirit. So connect with the spirit and let the spirit bear witness with your spirit. Acts in Romans, Romans 8, 16 and 26. It says, and the spirit of God bears witness with the spirit, makes it, make it you know, intercession with groanings that can never be altered. So let your spirit bear witness with the Holy Spirit of God and come and then dwell in the body. Let the Spirit of God fill your body, this flesh. The flesh is an outfit. It's just like my shirt. That is why Paul said, though we, though we, who are we? We are spirits. Though we, the spirits, walk in the flesh. So the flesh is just an outfit. We are spirits. Though we walk in the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are not fleshy. So which means we have nothing to do with the flesh. The flesh is just an instrument, an outfit, a covering that the Lord uses to work. So you feeling this flesh is, you know, God wants to use you to work. That is why your spirit, so the, as long as, as long as there is flesh on you, as long as you have life, as long as you have this covering of a flesh, you are to work for God. So whatever you are doing, do it as unto God, not as unto men. Hallelujah. So worship is what? Excuse me. Worship is when you offer your body to the Lord. You offer your body to the Lord. Um, that body must be holy, cleansed, purified, you know, maintain purity. Maintain cleanliness. Let's try our best. Sometimes it is, it is it is tough. Sometimes we all fall short. I fall short too. But guess what? Let's keep pressing. Remember what we did the last time. One thing we would do is to forget about the past and press on. So your true form of worship is when you offer your body to the Lord. Holy. And the next key, the fourth key is what? Acceptability. He said, holy and acceptable unto God. Holy and acceptable unto God. Abraham, God bless you. Lady Florence, God bless you. Holy and acceptable unto God. Acceptable unto God. Your worship must be acceptable. Your services to the Lord must be acceptable. Don't, I always say, this, don't just go somewhere because you think you are gifted. Don't just preach because you think you are anointed. Don't just do anything because you think you can do it. You know Uzziah in the Bible. Uzziah, you know, when you go to most African churches, you know, especially the Ghanaians, Uzziah be all my brother, boom, die by fire. In Uzziah in my life, die by fire. Why? Because in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah said, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. So just by that, because we don't read our Bible, because we don't read our Bible very well, because we don't read our Bible very well. Just because, uh, you know, Isaiah said, in the year King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. We think we have demonized, we have demonized um, Uzziah. But Uzziah wasn't a, he wasn't a demon. Uzziah wasn't an enemy of God. When you read 2 Chronicles 26, Uzziah was a young boy that God chose at the age of 16, made him a king. Amen. Made him a king. He was, he was the one that invented worship. Not worship. Worship like a, a, a ship that is used to fight. Worship. He was an engineer at those, those days. But, you know, what Uzziah did was that he went into the house of God to burn incense. It was time for them to burn the incense. But it wasn't his duty to do the to do the burning. He was the king, and so he became complacent about his position. So you don't just do anything just because you think you can do it. You don't just preach just because you think you can preach. You don't just travel because you think you can travel. Whatever you do, let the Lord lead you. And whatever you do. Let it be pleasing unto the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And so King Uzziah is not a demon. 
Uzziah was a boy that God chose and made him a king. But guess what? He went into the house of God and burnt an incense, something that he was not supposed to do. And that was how Uzziah attracted the wrath of God, the anger of God, and died. So Isaiah saying in the year King Uzziah died, Isaiah is not happy that Uzziah died. Isaiah was just giving an account. So why am I saying this? Don't just do things because you think you can do it. In the book of in the book of Acts chapter 16, before Paul and Silas were arrested, the Bible says they wanted to go to Asia to preach, but the Holy Spirit stopped them. They were going to preach, they were going to win souls, but the Holy Spirit stopped them. Don't just do things, don't just go anywhere just because you think you can go. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. That is part, that is the fourth part or your the fourth key to worship. Whatever you do must be acceptable unto God. Whatever you do in your, in your quest to worship God must be acceptable to the Lord. Let the Spirit of the, let the, Spirit of the whole, let the Spirit of God lead you. Amen. So, so let me just give a recap. Number one, your first key of worship is that you, you know, the, your first form of worship is that you offer your body to God. Worship is not just song. Worship is not just singing. Worship is when you give yourself to God. The Father, this is my body. Use me for whatever you want. Number two, that body, you must maintain purity. Whatever comes out of your mouth, whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever you do, must be pleasing to the Lord. Amen. Number three, you know, the body of giving God to use must be a sacrifice, not on condition. You must sacrifice. When you sacrifice something, you, you, give, you, you, you give, you pass ownership onto the person. So you are telling God that, Father, I offer my body to you. Use me for whatever you want me to be. I have, my, I have one of my mothers, Mama Cynthia, is watching. We go to the same church. She's, she's in my church too. She, she sees me. Sometimes I'll be playing the drums. I'll be taking videos. Does it take my anointing from me? No. Because why? Because when the need arises, I must be available because I have offered my body as a living sacrifice. Yes, that is worship. That you tell God the Father, use me however. I may be in suit. I may be nicely dressed. But if you need me to lie down, if you need me to clean, if you need me to do anything, I will do it. That is true worship. That is true worship. Hallelujah. So true worship is when you offer your body to God. Maintain purity, cleanliness, and then let it be a sacrifice. And whatever you do must be accepted by God. You must be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Don't just do things. Amen. Don't just do things. Hallelujah. So Paul is saying, so Paul is saying, that your true and your reasonable act of worship is when you offer your body as a God bless you, man of God. Your true and your reasonable act of worship is when you offer your body as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Amen. Your true and your reasonable act of worship is not just singing, but first, according to Romans 12, verse 1, you know, your first act of worship, your first form of worship is when you offer your body. You tell God to use you. So your worship, that's why I said true worship is working for God. True worship is not singing. True worship is when you allow the Lord to use you. You might think there is no anointing upon you. You might think there is no gift on you. Listen, just avail yourself and you will see what God will use you for. Just avail yourself at your workplace. Just avail yourself. And you will see how God is going to use you. 
So your reasonable act of worship is when you offer your body to him, you maintain purity and holiness, cleanliness. Number three, that offering must be a sacrifice. You tell God, you know, you don't tell God that, oh, Father, I've given myself to you, so use me as a prophet. Use me. Yeah, you can desire. But listen, if God wants to use you as an usher, do it. If God wants to use you as an instrumentalist, do it. Whatever you are telling God, that whatever you want to use me for, I, want, I, I am available. That is true worship. True worship. Do you love God? Do you really want to worship God? Then please, it is not just about singing. It is about availing yourself for the Lord to use. Amen. Let's go to let's go to um we have got let's go to first Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10 from verses 21. First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 21. Now we are we are progressing. If you have any, those that are watching, if you have any questions. Please feel free to let us know. First Corinthians chapter ten, verses twenty-one. Amen. We, we now we want to know how worship is a lifestyle. Worship as a lifestyle. Amen. First Corinthians, God bless you. First Corinthians chapter ten, from verse twenty-one. Yes, God bless you, evangelist. Fear not. God bless you. Everybody that's watching me. God bless you so much. We're talking about worship. Amen. What is true worship? Worship, true worship transcends just singing. True worship goes beyond just singing a song. True worship is working for God. Amen. I mean, Apostle Paul said in Romans 12 that your reasonable act of worship, your best form of worship is when you offer your body to the Lord and you maintain purity and that body that you have availed to the Lord, you know, is a sacrifice. So when it is a sacrifice, you don't tell God what you want him to do or what you want him to use you for. You know, it's a sacrifice. When you sacrifice something, if I give this watch away as a sacrifice, I cannot tell the person how to treat the watch. No. No. They can do, they cannot, they can even decide to give it away too. They can decide to give it away too. Amen. They can decide to give it away too. This watch, this watch is very expensive. My uncle gave it to me. It's very expensive. And, and he told me not to sell it. I won't sell it though, but I don't know why he said that. He told me, Ernest, this is very expensive, but don't sell it. Don't sell it. And I'm not going to sell it. But I can decide, me, I'm that type. I can, I can even give it, especially when I'm preaching, I can just give it away. Guess what? Well, can he beat me? No. So that is sacrifice. When you sacrifice something, when you sacrifice yourself to the Lord, you know, you are telling God that use me however you want. So you may be an apostle, you may be a bishop, you may hold the greatest titles, you may be, you know, you know, you you may be um a doctor, a whatever. You know, when you, when you come to our churches, I mean, when you come to our church, you know, there are some young ladies that that clean after service. When you come. You will meet doctors, you meet nurses, you, you know, you meet great, beautiful young ladies cleaning. Why? It doesn't take the certificates from them. That is worship. Amen. That is true worship. So true worship is not just singing, but true worship is for you to serve God, to allow yourself for God to use you. He can. God wants to use you. Everybody must work for God. Listen, gentlemen, if you really claim to love God, if you really claim to be a worshiper, then the Bible is teaching us to be true worshipers. And true worshiper is the one that avails their body because the Lord is spirit. John 20, 24. John 4, 24. God is spirit. And this spirit is looking for bodies, for flesh to use. Amen. So Paul said, though we the spirits walk in the flesh we are spirits the flesh is just like an outfit but though we walk in the flesh the weapons of our warfare are not kind of amen they are not fleshy so ladies and gentlemen do you want god to use you do you really want to worship god then your act of worship is to tell god to use you to offer your body to god and maintain purity maintain cleanliness and allow god to use you amen but you know i like the acceptability part of it woman of god he said and, and let it be acceptable unto god don't just do things because you think you can do it don't just do things because you have done it before don't let the holy spirit of god lead you 
Uzziah, King Uzziah, that Isaiah said in the year King Uzziah died in Isaiah 6. Uzziah wasn't a demon. Uzziah was a king that God blessed. But because of disobedience, because he did what he think needs to be done. Without the leadings of the Holy Spirit, that was how he became leprous and he died eventually. He went to the house of God to burn incense. The incense was the, the incense was supposed to be burnt, but it wasn't his duty. So don't just do things because you think you can do it. In, in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, before their arrest, they wanted to go and preach in Asia. But the Holy Spirit of God stopped them. They were going to win souls. They were going to do good things. But the, Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit of God stopped them. Don't just move just because you think you can move. You know, whatever you do, your act of worship must be accepted by God. You must be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Man of God, let's go ahead. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 21 to 33. Corinthians chapter 10 from 21 to 23. To 33. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, we, we will pause. So yeah, just read from 21. I'll let you know when to pause. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Okay, hold on. Pause there. That is very deep. You cannot drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot be a lukewarm. You cannot have a favorite worship song and also have a favorite worldly song. There are people like that. You know, recently, um, Nathaniel Bassi wrote something on his Instagram page. He said, he said, Christians love Christian music. Christians love gospel music until it is their wedding, whatever. <laughs> yes. Because when Christians are getting married at the wedding reception, they'll be playing worldly songs. And they will give you every reason that oh, it's not a sin. It's not a sin. You cannot be a lukewarm. You cannot be a lukewarm. About two years ago, I think about three years ago, when I moved from Virginia to Rhode Island, back to Rhode Island, uh, I went to, one of my friends was, was having like a Christian naming ceremony. So I went there, you know, I went there and they were playing some, they were playing some hip life, Ghana hip life songs. And I realized that, you know, I realized that it started ringing in, my, in me. I realized I started tapping my foot. So right there, I'm like, no, you know what, let me go. Yes. Haven't you haven't you realized haven't you gone through stuff like that? You listen to a song and it'll be ringing within your mind. Yes. So okay. you cannot drink from the cup of demons, you cannot drink from the cup of evil people and still drink. You know, let let us let us be true to ourselves. As part of our worship, worship is a lifestyle. Worship is a lifestyle. You cannot worship God and also have some fantasies in, in worldly things. You cannot say, oh, me, I will not drink. They, 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 I don't drink, but I can just go and hang out with them. Let's be careful. Bible says in Psalm 1, the book of Psalms chapter 1, the blessed is the man that, that does not sit, nor stand, nor sit, nor walk in the path of the sinner, the scornful, oh, all those people. Amen. Woman of God, please continue. Okay, um, let me start from the 21 again. Mm -hmm. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. 22, mm -hmm. are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than he? 23, I have the right to do anything you say. Mm. But not everything is beneficial. Yes. You have the right to do everything. Yes. Mm. But not everything is beneficial. Mm. You have the right to live your life anyhow you want. But it's not, it's not everything that will benefit you. A time is coming. That music. 
that thing we did, that promiscuity, that fornication, the way we slept around, the way we sinned, the way we stole, the way we did all those kinds, the way we were lukewarm. Sundays we are in church worship, you know, singing, and we say, we, I worship you, Lord, I worship you, Lord. But we close and we go have sex. We close and we go mess up. We are holding grudges with people in the church. The same people we are worship, the same people we are worshiping in the church with. We are holding grudges against them. We cannot be lukewarm. Everything you have the right to everything, whatever you want. But we might have got to repeat that 20, 22. Yes. I'm 23, right? Yes. Yeah. I have the right to do anything you say, but not but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, no one should seek their own good but the good of others. No one should seek their own good but the good of others. So in your way, in your form of worship, as, your li as a lifestyle of worship, whatever you do, whatever you do, you avail yourself to worship, I mean, for God to use, it must be to the benefit of others. Your worship must not be to your benefit. Don't, don't do the work of God just because you want to take money from people. Don't do the work of God just because, you know, you want to take advantage of the ladies. And ladies, don't do the work of God just because you want to take advantage of men. Don't do the work of God because of your selfish interest. That is why, that, that is why, oh. man of God, that is why Jesus said, you know, some, you know, he said he would ask them, when I was in prison, when I was in, you know, when I was naked, when I was, when I was hungry, you were, you were never there for me. And they will say, when? And you will tell them, as you did not do for your brethren, you did not do for me. So whatever you do, as your form of worship, serving God, it must first be to the benefit of others. You know, there are certain things I've been praying for. And people that I prayed with, or I prayed for, they, most of, some of them, most of them will get it, but I don't have it. And sometimes I will pray to God, the Father, even if you don't do it for me, do it for that person. Because, because there are some people that when they don't see the hand of God, it is easy for them to lose their faith. So sometimes that is a prayer I pray. That, Father, even if you don't do it for me, do it for this sister. Do it for this brother. Even if you don't do mine, do it for them. You should have the heart for people. If you really want to worship God, it's not just about singing. It's not just about, you know, laying on the floor. It's about seeing the best in people, being the solution to people's problems. Being the solution to people's problems. You know someone that is struggling. You know someone that has only one shoe. You know someone that repeats the, almost the same outfit. You know someone that is hungry. You know someone whose child is, you know, is not in school because of money. If you are able, don't just pray for them. Be the solution. That is worship. When you offer your body as a living sacrifice that the Spirit of God will indwell, that God will manifest. When people see you, let them see Jesus. You must be a reflection of Jesus Christ. So true worship is a lifestyle. Not just singing. Not just somebody coming to lead a song. No, that is not worship. Because anybody can lead a song. Anybody. If, if, you know, if, if you go to the nightclub, let's say you are in a nightclub or a party, a function like that, and they say, you know what, um, let's, let's say one minute prayer. Everybody will bow down their heads. But the moment the prayer is done, they'll go back to their alcohol, they'll go back to their cigar and whatever. 
So worship is not it's not just singing. True worship is when you avail yourself for God to use you. Don't be a Christian who thinks you know only one person is called. Don't be a Christian who thinks only a nest is called. No. For those who belong to the Jesus centered WhatsApp team, Jesus centered family, I, I, I always let you, let you know that everybody must work for God, not just me. Because God forbid, tomorrow I may be down. Tomorrow maybe, you know, I don't want to use my mouth to even say that. <laughs> yeah, because, because I know how God has made my mouth. Yes. But tomorrow, somebody, you know, there are people who are very much on fire for God. But this, but maybe right now they don't want anything to do with the things of God, so that you too can go and uplift them. Jesus said, so that your faith may not fail. Amen. Please continue. Okay. If um, if you are talking about the twenty-five, twenty-five people in the house, first Corinthians three twenty-five. I mean, first Corinthians ten twenty-five. eating whether it is drinking whether it is going for a party whether it is going to even dealing with the enemy whether it is dealing with the friends whether it is dealing with church people whether it is dealing with anything it is a lifestyle whatever you do do it what to the glory of God and do, to do anything is work right everything you do is a work to eat is work, to cook is work, to walk is work, to do whatever you do, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. God bless you, Madina. Amen. So, worship, true worship, is a lifestyle, it's not just an activity. True worship is when you know that this person, last night, you know, yesterday, two days ago, I was good to them, they, they were ungrateful, but guess what, I am doing, I will still help them because I'm not doing it unto men, but I'm doing it unto the Lord. <laughs> Colossians 3.23 So whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, not as unto men. So whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Worship is a lifestyle. Whatever you do, however you live your life, make sure it is your form of worshiping God. And so, when we go back to Romans 12, Apostle Paul says, Romans 12 verse 1, Apostle Paul is saying, that, Roman, can you please go there? Apostle Paul is saying, I beseech you, therefore, I beseech you, therefore, I beg you, please, by the mercies of God, because it is like, it is, 
It looks like he's giving a testimony that, hey, listen, if there's any best form of worship you can ever get, it is not about singing. I've witnessed something. I have a testimony to share with you. There is a, there is a worship that you can give God because God, the Spirit, is looking for verses to use. He's looking for people to use. So your best form of worship is one, just avail yourself. Forget about your sins. Forget about who you are. Just avail yourself and say, Lord, use me. God wants to heal somebody in your family. At your workplace, God wants to heal someone. But he's a spirit. He's just looking for vessels to use. In that village that you may live, in that city where you may live, in your neighborhood, God wants to perform a miracle. But he's just looking for one person. He said, I sought for one man to stand in the gap. Ezekiel 22, verse 32. So I sought for one man to stand in the gap. In Genesis 18, only Abraham was able, able to save Sodom and Gomorrah. One person, one man. Do you love God? Do you really love God? Do you really worship God? Praise God, you have a favorite worship song, but that is not worship. That is not enough worship. That is, that is an expression of worship. That is an expression. You see, when it's like when women of God, when, when they are playing soccer and they score a goal, they go out there and they jubilate. They dance. They do acrobatics. That is, that is what we do in church, singing songs. But the most part of it, the most part of the worship is the work that you put in place. True worship is working for God. And ladies and gentlemen, if you really believe in God, if you really serve God, if you really know that there is a supreme God, that you want to worship Him, it is not just about singing a song. It's not just about loving a song. These days, people can play gospel music and be taking their Guinness. People can be sipping their E&J, their vodka, their absolute. People can be taking their wine, their alcohol, and be, and be enjoying a Christian music. Oh, wow, I love this song. I mean, you may be fine, fine. <laughs> but that is not worship. Worship is not, worship is not singing. Singing is an expression of worship. You sing when, 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 you are, when you see the work you have done, when you see the work God has done through you, they say, how? I just want to praise you. I lift my hands and I say, I love you. You are everything to me. Let's go. And I just exalt your name, Lord, I exalt your name, and I exalt your name, Lord. You see? Sometimes, sometimes personally when I'm home and maybe I'm watching some of the videos that God has used me, especially, especially I love, that's why I post those videos a lot. I love, I love to see people falling on the ground. Amen. I love that. That's, that's my part of it. I love, I, I love to see people falling on the ground. I love that part of it. You know why? Because I can imagine that, hey, God can use me. You know, by the grace of God, I speak to the glory of God. God has used us by the grace of God to heal people, people that had HIV. You know, I could be making noise from those, not just one person. By the grace of God, God has used us to heal people that had HIV. I could be making noise of those, but I just enjoy the fact that, you know, I, you don't push someone and there is an anointing that comes out of you and it, it pulls the people down and they get deliverance. I love those part of it. And so when, and, and so when, 
when when I'm watching those kind of videos, you know, out of the works that God has used me to do, sometimes most times I'll just go on my on my knees and I will say, Radimeda was why. Radimeda was why. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. And maybe I'll start singing. All I'm saying is thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. All I'm saying is thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. You see, so the song, sing, the singing of the song is an activity of the worship. So the singing of the song it's not worship. Your true worship is when you offer yourself that God uses. Maybe someone says something about you. You could have fought them. You could have insulted them. But when you saw them, you showed them love. When you come home, you know that, wow, I am maturing spiritually. Because two years ago, I would have slapped this girl. Yeah. Yes. And now you begin to sing songs unto the Lord. Uh, God wants to use you. Don't look down on yourself. Do not undermine yourself. God wants to use you. But it starts from you first availing yourself to the Lord. God wants to use you. But it begins when you say, Father, I give myself. A time is coming. Just, just from what Jesus said. Woman of God. We have to take it seriously. He said, because you did not do it for your brother. Because you did not do it for your brother. Let's, you know, look, look 18 from 18 down. What we, we read last night, I mean, the last time. Uh, mm -hmm. This one thing, the young rich man, he said he, he lived a righteous life. He was not stealing. He was not committing adultery. He honored the father and the mother. But Jesus said, there is this one thing you are lacking. You have not taken care of the poor. You have not taken care of those that are in need. You have been, you have been praying for yourself. You have been selfish. But there is a drunk in your family. There is a lesbian in your family. There is somebody struggling to bear children in your church, in your family. Have you prayed for them? Have you prayed for them? In your, in your family, people are not saved. You are busy traveling. You are busy talking to people. Have you, tra have you spoken? Have you testified about Jesus to your family members? So worship is not singing a song. God wants to use you. God really wants to use you. For all you know, if you just avail yourself, that cancer in somebody's life will live through you. Somebody's breakthrough is embedded in the power of your mouth. You don't just sit down and be a recipient. Don't just sit down and be a fan of Christianity. Don't just sit down and be a supporter of people. Yes, it is good to support people's ministry. But you too, there is ministry in you. And that is what my ministry stands for. That is what the Jesus Center stands for. That everybody must work for God. Not just me. Not just me. If God can use me, He can use you too. If God can use me, He can use you too. You must worship God. And so from today, I want one thing to be in, the, you know, in your minds without humility. That whenever you hear about worship, ask yourself, what have I done for God? Whenever you hear about worship, the first key, the first thing you must ask yourself, what have I done for God? When they introduce a minister in the church and say, Now, lift your hands up, let us worship God. Note that worship goes beyond lifting your hands up. Worship, you know, they say, as a form of surrender. Yes, worship is surrender. You surrender your life. Not just, 30, not just that 30 minutes. Worship is a lifestyle. Therefore, whatever you do, do it to glorify God. 
do it to the glory of God. Man of God, please read Romans 12 again. I hope you are being blessed. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to post it. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 down. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true, reasonable, true, and um, mine says this is your true and proper worship. This is your true and proper. It means, it means, yes, yes, there are other worships, but this is the true one. This is the proper way of worship. This is your proper way of worship. This is your reasonable act of worship. Act. It is a work. Some some verses will say this is your true or your proper way of service. This is a reasonable service. Worship is a service. Worship is an activity. Worship is a lifestyle. Are you a worshiper? It means you are you're a worker for God. If you tell me if you tell me you are a worshiper, then it means you work for God. True worshipers work for God. Do you work for God? Woman of God, read Romans 2.6. Please, please. Romans chapter 2, verse 6. Yes. Romans chapter 2, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. God will repay each person according to what they have done. God will repay each one of us according to what we have done. God will pay you according to your works. God will judge you according to your works. Woman of God, did he say God will pay some people? Everybody. Everybody. God will pay everybody. Everybody. Whether you are old, young, rich, poor, educated, uneducated, single, married. God will repay everybody. God will judge everybody according to their works. So if you haven't worked, if you don't work, what are you going to show to the Lord? That is why everybody must work for the Lord. Because you can, you can either work for God or work for the Satan or, or work for the devil. And remember what the woman of God read. He said you cannot drink from the devil's cup and drink from God's cup also. You cannot be a lukewarm. You cannot be working for God and be working for the devil. When you do that, God will deny you. In the book of Revelation, he said, I will spit you out of my mouth. Please, don't just be a church goer and think you are a Christian. Don't just be supporting people's ministry and think by that you will go to heaven. Everybody must work for God. In your pursuit to support ministries, make sure that you are kingdom minded. You are doing it because of God. And because and, and in your form of doing it, do what? Work for God. I'm not I'm not saying this to flatter the woman of God that I'm doing the thing with. But this is somebody who has a, a, a you know she has every reason not to be on the phone because she has a daughter. And there are other things too. But guess what? Because she, through the teachings, she, she understands that she has to work for God. If it's, even midnight, I tell her, oh, no, no, woman of God, stay, stay, just, just sleep, sleep, sleep. And she's a missus, married to my friend, one of my very good friends. Why? Because we have learned to work for God. Not just be a Christian. However she wants to, however she must work for God, she wants to do it. 
Working for God is not limited to church, inside a church. No. But try to find something to do in your church. Try to find something to do. Like I said, you know, Mama Cynthia is watching. When I'm in church, sometimes, I don't always have to hold the microphone. Sometimes mm -hmm. I will, sometimes I will, when I came for your program, what did I yeah. do? When the drama was in there, what did I do? I went when and played the drum. I moved from the front seat to go and play the drums. Why? Because, because your form of worship is when you offer your body as a sacrifice. The Lord, you know, this may not be the position I want to be, but I will, I will offer myself to you. And if you remember, if you remember very well, I, sh I, I told you that before it happened. You know why? Because I just remembered. Because before I was coming for your program, I told you that I had a vision that, you remember? Yes. I had a vision that I was invited to a program and I was at the front seat, but I moved to the instruments. Remember? Yes. I, the Holy Spirit just reminded me. And it happened. It happened. It happened. You see? So when you offer your body as a living sacrifice, you sacrifice to God. Please. Let me ask you, what do you do for God? What do you do for God? Your friends, you are able to stay on the phone for 20, 24 hours. Two hours with your friend. Sometimes you have nothing saying. You say, hold on. Hold on, Kakra. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me, hold on. Let me, let me take care of the stew. Hold on. You have nothing saying. But why don't you use that, that time? To say, you know, my sister, I know you are complaining about your husband. I know what he's doing is not good. But can I pray with you? Guess what? You have worked for God. They may call you to gossip. They may go call you to gossip. But you can say, you know what? I think we should pray for him. I think we should pray for her. Yes. You have worked for God. Someone calls you. They are struggling. Don't just pray for them. If you have the means, help them. So worship goes beyond singing. Worship is a lifestyle. Whatever you are doing, do it to the glory of God. If, if you are sinning, ask yourself, does it glorify God? I want us to pray. Man of God, just read the verse 2 and we'll, we'll pray. Yes, sir. Verse 2. Romans 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Now, um... Okay. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. Romans 12. Oh, so, oh, okay, back yeah. to Romans 12. That was Romans 2, right? Yes. Yeah, Romans 12. Okay. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, verse 2. Mm hmm Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. You see, woman of God, this year, the Lord told us that it's a year of transformation, right? Remember? Yes, transformation. Uh, you, know, you see, you see, it is falling in place that this one thing we did, you know, it means that you know there's something you want God to, de you desire God to do for you, but don't just sit down, go for it, seek after it, transformation. Now, he said, do not conform to the pattern of this world. The reason why a lot of people think God has neglected them, the reason why a lot of people think their prayers are not being answered, is because we have conformed to the pattern of this world. We think at a certain age, you're supposed to marry, you're supposed to have children. Because that is what this word teaches us. We think as a, at a certain age, you're supposed to get a certain kind of money. Be and so everybody is doing whatever it would take them to get that kind of money. Beautiful men and beautiful women, innocent people, women that love God, they still have to sleep around. They do love God, but they, they, they still have to sleep around to get money. 
Men that love God, they still have to sleep around to satisfy themselves. Because we conform to the pattern of this world. But so do not conform to the pattern. Don't follow the path of this world. Don't think like the world. The world will laugh at you for, for doing the work of God. They will ask you, what have you gotten? You have nothing to show. But do not conform to this world. Do not, you see, some people will even tell you it is, it is, you are being uncultured, you are uncivilized to talk about Jesus, to talk about your religion at a certain place. Because that is what the, that is what the pattern of this world has psyched up our minds to think. So we are in a meeting, why are you talking about God? We are, we are, at, we are, what, this is the workplace, come on, you can talk about your church, you think you can talk about religion, we are in a plane. No, do not conform to this world. If you can talk about sports, me when I when you come to my office, if you can talk about sports to me, I can talk about Jesus to you because I don't like sports. I'm not a sports person. My sports is boxing and, and car race when you know when when I see people being beaten. My sports is watching funny videos. That's what I love. Do not conform to this world, but what should we do? Please continue. But be transformed. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed, be changed by first renewing your mind. What is your mindset about worship? What is your mindset about you standing outside to preach? You think, e, what are people going to say? When I do Facebook Live, e, what, what are people going to say? This guy that I, that, that I slept with, this lady that I slept with, this is my pastor, this is my this. Because that is the reason why most people cannot progress, the reason why most people are reluctant in doing what they want to do is because they are so concerned about what people will say. Yes, a lot of people are, in, you know, are hindered, are self-impeded because because they are so much concerned about what people will say hey they know me to be a sinner when i start to preach when i start to talk about god they are going to laugh at me listen be transformed transformation is change transformation is a process it takes time sometimes you may fall yes sometimes you know last night i was watching a transformation process of of an ego when an eagle, you know, I will say, I will share that video. It takes process. Sometimes you may fall. We all fall. I've, I, listen, I've fallen many times. I know I have fallen many times. But guess what? One thing we do is to forget about the past and we press on. Be transformed by first renewing your mind. What is your thought about worship? I believe today we have learned something that worship is not just singing a song, but worship is working for God. Man of God, right? Yes, sir. What what do you what do you have to say about worship? <laughs> <laughs> when you asked that I knew it was coming. Yeah, I, yeah, you should know. You are, you're the same. You are anointed. So yes. tell us about worship. What is worship? Especially for those who just joined. They may not know what we're talking about, so just explain worship to them. True worship. Okay. So, um, true worship is it's not like just going to, I mean, singing, taking up microphone and singing. Because when you take out, you just, if you think true worship is just singing, after singing, what next? Mm -hmm. True worship is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. you, you, you offer yourself. Mm -hmm. When you love some, I mean, we worship God because, you know, we sing songs like, we are um, singing, I love you. you know? mm -hmm. One of the songs says we love God. If you love God, you want to worship Him. Yes. If you love somebody, you always want to do things to please them. You always want mm -hmm. you adore them. Like, yes. Huh. So it has to be it's the same thing as worship. If you mm -hmm. claim you love God, 
it's not just opening your mouth and saying, God, I love you, I love you, I love you, and then you do the opposite. Yeah. When you come back, when you come back from church or you come home, when you are there alone, you do the opposite. It has to be a lifestyle. It yeah. has to be part of you. Yeah. In everything that you do, you have to do it to the glory of God, like the Bible says. When you true worship, the Bible says we should offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Yeah. And that is a proper act of worship. Offering yourself is like you're giving yourself away to God. Yeah. You're telling God, oh, this is my body. God, use me to do what you want to use me to do. Mm-hmm. And that is proper act of worship. Yeah. Um, when you wake up, like I say, one part of um, worship being a lifestyle is like, you know, it's not, you know, some people just wake up and then they just go go their way you have to when you wake up you thank god everything you're doing you are about to eat you give glory to god yes you are about to go out you give glory to god you are about to speak you give glory to god well i love i love i love you for this powerful powerful message continue you are flowing yeah you are about to sleep you have to give glory to god because guess what Many people went out and they never came back. So it has to be part of you. It has to be a lifestyle. You don't just wait till you go to church to say, God, I love you, or to say, God, I thank you. Yes. You have to do it every single minute, every second. Yes. Even when you are answering your phone, God, I yes. thank you. Because people answer the phone and they, they don't finish and they, they, they end up dying. Yes. So whatever it is that you're doing, you have to give thanks. It has to be like a daily thing. Every day, every single minute, every single second, you have to say, God, I thank you. Yes. And that is what worship is. Apart from working for God, that is also another part of worship. Yes. And also, you don't have to wait to, like, hold a microphone. You, have, you don't have to wait to. Many people think, oh, like, you do something, you have to come, like, for people to see. Like, you know, yes. you have to be at the limelight. Yeah. That is doing something for God. You can be an usher. I'm yeah. telling you. Yep. You stand. You stand by the door of your church. You welcome somebody. It's working for God. Yeah. You are. You can clean the church. Mhm. It's working for God. Yes. Nothing. I'm telling you. There's so much blessing in doing that. Yes. You clean people's mess. Yes. In the house of the Lord. Yes. You don't do it anywhere. Guess yes. what? You could have gone somewhere else, but you choose. Yep. You clean people's mess. Whatever mess that they do, you clean it up in yes. the house of the Lord. Yep. And it's a very big blessing. Yes. So you don't wait for them for, for your pastor to ordain you as a, as an evangelist or as yeah. a pastor or no. as a minister, whatever, before you start working for God. You can be an usher. Yeah. Sometimes you, you don't even know. Sometimes what God has given to you, you have to use. Sometimes offering, like, you know, you see people, you smile to them. Yeah. You don't know, sometimes you don't know what it does for people. Yep. For, for all you know, somebody might be going through something. Time. Yep. But God has given you that gift that when you see, you smile at people, they feel good. Yep. So that's why that is the gift that God has given to you. You yep. have to use it. Mm-hmm. You, might, you might have the gift of encouraging somebody. Yeah. There are some people, no matter what you're going through, when they, you, they speak to you, you yeah. feel so at ease. Yeah. That is the gift that God has given to you. Yeah. Use that to work for God. Yep. And of course, going out to proclaim the goodness of God. Yes. Guess what? It's also worship. Yep. Because you're telling people how God, good God is. Yep. So yes, this is what I understand by worship. Amen. 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 You know, um, let's let's read Colossians three twenty two again because you made mention of doing things not for people to see. I, I believe you weren't on the line as a then, but just read oh. Colossians three twenty two. Yes, sir. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Colossians three twenty two. Colossians chapter three. Verse twenty two. <clears throat> verse twenty two. Yeah. Um. Verse twenty two. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, mm-hmm. and do it not only when their eye <laughs> is on you. Just, yes, yeah. don't do it just because your pastor is there. Yeah. Don't do it just because you want someone to see it. Yeah. You know, there are people like that. There are people like that. They yeah. always want people to see them. Yeah, they just want people to see they are in the yeah. limelight. Yeah. 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 
So the people, even when they are praying and the pastor is not there, maybe they just do anything. But the moment the pastor enters, and they be spitting. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't do it just because, just for people to see. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, not only when their eyes on you and to carry their favor, yeah. but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. With sincerity of the heart. Worship is in your heart. It's not even about the voice. It's about your heart. With what heart are you rendering the worship to him? You see, the reason why, the reason why I love to watch funny videos, I believe I've told you because you are close to me. The reason why I love to watch funny videos is because I always want to, 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 to be happy. So that the whole... That is also another act that is worshipful. Yes. That's why I share funny, that's why I share funny videos. I've had people tell me, oh, I've had people tell me, Oh, you're a man of God, you shouldn't be. I'm like, you be your man of God somewhere. Sometimes what someone needs is not, is not preaching. I'm telling you. Haven't you been there before? Where you are fed up. Sometimes, you know, what someone needs is a tickle. A tickle. That's why sometimes when a child is crying, you don't say, because when you talk to them, they won't mind you. But you just tickle them. Yes. Yeah, and, and, yes. Yeah, and they will they smile laugh. and they'll start yeah. laughing. You see, the, the reason why personally I watch funny videos and I encourage everybody to like funny videos because the more you watch it, it makes your spirit happy. You are always happy and attracts, it creates a beautiful atmosphere for the Holy Spirit of God. That is worship. You are not thinking about yourself. You are thinking about the one that lives in you. You're not just thinking about yourself because someone broke your heart or because you got offended. But you are thinking that, you know what? Though I am offended, there is God that lives on the inside of me. And I have to create that in conducive environment for him. That is worship. That is worship. The true worship is not singing. Singing is just like an activity of it. God wants to use you. Maybe this message is for you, one person. Someone's destiny is in your mouth. Someone's destiny is in this decision you want to make. The Father wants you to use me. Father, Lord, I want you to use me. I offer my body to you. I know there is so much mess in my body, but you are the best clean. You are the best cleaner. You are the best. You have a blood that, will, that is able to cleanse me. God is calling you. Jesus is calling you right now. He wants to use you right now. I don't know if you really want God to use you. I don't know if you really want to worship God. I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God, brethren, that you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Right now, do you want to worship God? Do you really want to worship God? I just want you to pray in the Holy Ghost if you do. Come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Whatever you are, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Whatever you are, come on. Come on, let the prayers flow in the Holy Ghost. Pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. As a form of surrender to the Lord. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray. Somebody open up your mouth. There is revival. You may be a minister. God may be using you again. God may be using you already, but there is a revival coming your way. Pray. Just pray the Holy Ghost. That I want to offer my body to you, Lord. My body, Lord. My body, Lord. Jesus, be the center. Be the center. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the measures of God that you offer your body as a living sacrifice. I give myself away to you, Lord. Take me, Lord. Take me, Lord. Kabada da bro. Lebre tada da bro. Father, take me, Lord. Take me. I offer myself to you, Lord. Somebody open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus.
you are the center. Somebody open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Everything revolves around you, Lord Jesus. Somebody open up your mouth. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Say, Father, use me one more time. Use me again. I need fresh oil, fresh ocean. Fresh oil. Pray for fresh oil. Oil of the Holy Ghost. Pray for fresh oil. Use me, Lord. Somebody open up your mouth and pray, 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 pray. There is revival coming to you. There is revival coming to you. Paul said, I beg you by the message of God that you offer your body as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Say, Father, I offer myself to you. I may be a sinner. I may be a thief. I may be a fornicator. But I know you want me to come just as I am. He says, come, let us reason together. Though your sins may be as red as scarlet, don't worry. Jesus is calling you. Somebody, do you want to offer your body to the Lord? Come on, covenant with the Lord right now. Covenant with Jesus. The Lord, use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Lady Barada Brashika Baba Bada Bradaba. Lady the Brakada Brashika Baba Da Badaba. Lady the Brashika Baba Bada Brashika Dada Brata. Somebody open up your mouth and say, Lord Jesus, I offer my body to you. I offer my body to you. From today, I affirm myself that you will use me. However, as a sacrifice, however you want to use me, you can use me as an usher. You can use me as to, to, to direct traffic. You can use me to take videos, to play instruments. Somebody open up your mouth. Just dedicate yourself to the Lord. Rededicate your ministry to the Lord. Lady bro, shake a bra. Please take it serious and dedicate your life to the Lord. Dedicate your ministry to the Lord. As a living sacrifice, a sacrifice. I am still living, but I offer myself as a sacrifice to you. Use me however you want. Use me. Use me however, however you want, Lord. Somebody pray. Come on. However you want to use me, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. Yes, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus, yes. It's all about you. Say, Lord Jesus, my services will be all about you. You will be the center in whatever I will do. Jesus, so whatever you will do must be to the benefit of others, not yourself. It is all about you. It's all about you. Oh, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. It is all about you. All about you. Somebody open up your mouth. Just pray to the Lord. The Lord, I offer myself. Father, please use me. I want to work for you, Lord. Say, Lord, use me. And whatever I do will be all about you. You will be the center. Yes. It's all about you, Lord. It has nothing to do with me, Lord. My services are all about you, Lord. My preaching is all about you, Lord. Somebody let it be your prayer. Oh, Lord, Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. Never about us, Lord. Somebody open up your mouth. Let it be your prayer. My service is say, Lord, I may have anger issues, but I still want to serve you. I, I, I may be a sinner, but I still want to do the work of God. It's not about me, it's about you, Jesus. It's not about me, it's not about my sins, it's not about who I am. Somebody open up your mouth, say, Lord, you know I have so many messes. Lady Brush, shake up, ba ba ba. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You said you were deeper within. To the way things appear. You are looking to my heart. Yes, Lord. I'm coming back to you, Lord. Right back to the back. a song. For a song in itself is more than what you have cried. 
You search my deeper within. You search my deep. Say, Lord, I want to. I want you to use me. Somebody open up your mouth. Lady Debra, Shekara Debra. Somebody open up your mouth. Pray to God. You are establishing a covenant with God. I'm coming back. We're running back to the Father right now. With a heart of worship. Your worship is to save God. It's all about you, Lord. Somebody open up your mouth. Remember, worship is about the heart. Present your heart to the Lord. Say, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my heart, Lord. I give you my heart, Lord. I give you my heart, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. Somebody open up your mouth. I'm coming back with a heart of worship. Do you want to worship God? Do you want to do the work of God? Do you want to preach? Do you want to save souls? La 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 la. It's about you. Yes. It's all about you. I want to serve you, Lord Jesus, for the rest of my life. It's all about you. The work is not about me. It's not about what I want. But it's all about you, Jesus. Somebody let it be your prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I rededicate my ministry to you. Man of God, woman of God, rededicate your ministry to the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, let it not be about me. Even when I'm weak, use me. Even when I feel like giving up, still use me. It is not about my emotions. It is not about my feelings. It is about what pleases the Lord. I will not hold grudges against people. I will not take offense in people. No matter how they treat me, I will still serve you, Lord. Let it be your prayer. Yes, Lord. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, will not despise. Psalm 51, 17. Somebody, come on, open up your mouth and speak to the Lord. I want you to personalize it. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. The Father, I want to serve you. I want to work for you. Because Romans 2, 6 says, God is going to pay each one of us according to our works. A time is coming we are going to stand before God. And what will you tell God? What will you show God that you did for him? Say, Father, use me, Lord. Oh, heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you, Lord, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Somebody open up your mouth. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Say, Lord Jesus, whatever I would do in serving you, let it be acceptable. Let me not do things my own way. Let me not be like Uzziah. Who did things his own way? Open up your mouth and rededicate your life to the Lord. Your ministry. Tell God the Father, I want to work for you. I want to work for the God, for the Lord. Yes, it's all about you. It will not be about what I'm going through. I may be going through a tough time, but I'll still work for you, Lord. The enemy may be pursuing my life, but I still work for you, Lord. I still offer my body as a living sacrifice. Whenever you need me, I may be sleepy, but I'll still avail myself for your services, Lord. I may be sick, but I'll still avail myself for your services, Lord. I may be hungry. I may be going through tough times. Somebody just pray. Let it be your prayer. That no matter the situation, you alone. Lord, you be there, the right thing. Every moment I wake. Yes, Lord. Lord, have your way in me. This is your form of worship. This is your sacrifice to the Lord. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Somebody, let it be your prayer. Don't just sing it. Let it be your prayer. The Lord, I give my whole being to you. Every moment I wake. Everything that I do, it is a lifestyle. Every lifestyle, Lord, have your way in me. 
This is your worship. This is true worship, beloved. Can't you feel the presence? Can't you feel that this is true worship? When you give your all to the Lord, it is not just a song. This is true worship. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way. Bless you, Lord. We just glorify your name. Ancient of days. Yes, Lord. La 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 la. Le 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 le. Oh 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 oh. Yes, Lord. be conformed by this world. Do not follow the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewal of your mind. I want you to pray. You know what goes on in your mind. What are you afraid of? What are you fear? Why are you scared of? You don't think you are gifted? You don't think you are a shy person? Just say, Lord, I renew my mind right now. I can do it. I can do it. I can do all things. Jesus, through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians, give you praise. Yes, Lord. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Now we have a deeper understanding of worship. So you know what worship is. All I have, everything that is within me. Yes, Lord. I give you praise. Give you praise. And all I adore is in you. The happiness I want, the goodness that I want, the greatness is in you, Lord. Somebody, come on. Let's go. Lord, I give you giving God the best of your worship and it's your sacrifice if you feel like going on your knees do so if you feel like laying on the floor do so this is your true worship this is your reasonable act of worship this is how you know that you are really talking to God you know this is how you know that even without a song even without a lyrics you know that it's a communication that you are communicating to the Lord the father what should I do next I give you all my heart I give you all my soul. I want you to use me, send me. Use me for your glory. This is true worship. When you understand worship in this perspective, you will know why you must go on your knees. You will know why you must lay on the floor. You will know why nothing must trouble you. You will know why a phone call will not distract you because you are talking to God. This is your true act of worship. This is your true act of worship. The reasonable act of worship is when you avail yourself for God to use without any complaints, without any expectation. Every breath I love, every moment I'm awake. Oh. Save you, Lord. I still want to do your work, Lord. So, Lord, have your way in me. Come on, come on. Oh. It's all about you. Talk to Jesus. 
It's all about you. Yes, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. It is all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. We are about to end this video. We are about to end this broadcast. But for the next one minute, I want you to rededicate your life to Jesus. You know where you are falling. I want you to be true to yourself and rededicate your life to Jesus. You know how you used to love to do the work of God. But right now your focus has been on your own gains. But I said that worship, your service to God must not be about self, but others. I want you to rededicate your life to Jesus. And say that, Lord, it is all about you. It is all about you, Jesus. Open up your mouth. Just one minute. Rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus. Rededicate your ministry, your services, your worship to the Lord. It's all about you, Lord. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the same. We are Jesus centered. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. Be the center, Lord. Be the center, Lord. Be the center of my life. Be the center of my marriage. Be the center of my ministry. Be the center of my work, Lord, of my education, Lord. Be the center of my work to you, Lord, my services, Lord. Be the center of your people, of our lives, of our finances, Lord. Somebody say, be the center, Lord. 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 Let him on a brushika ba 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 ba. Let him on shika da da brata. Yes, Lord. Love you, Lord. Somebody just thank God for the word. For such a powerful word that we have gotten. That we've understood that worship is is more than a song. Worship is more than a song. Just thank God. Thank God for such a powerful word. That we've now known that worship goes beyond the song. Worship is when we avail ourselves for God to use. He said, I beseech you therefore, by the mercies of God, that you offer your body. And so this evening, I know you are a worshiper. And you are not a worshiper because you are singing. You are a worshiper because you have availed yourself for God to use you. He said, I beg you by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies. As a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable for the Lord to use. This is your reasonable act of worship. I want you to thank God that from today, you are going to allow God to use you. You are going to avail your body for the services of God. God bless you, Mama Savior. God bless you. God bless you for joining us. God bless everybody. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that from today I will work for you. This is my reasonable act of worship to work for the Lord. God bless you. Just for one minute, I want you to pray for me and the woman of God that we avail ourselves for God to use us. Please, I want you to pray for us. Pray for the covering of God over our lives. Pray for the mercies of God. Pray for me and the woman of God, please. Pray for us in the name of Jesus. Please pray for me and the woman of God. Her name is Nana. Her name is Nana. Eleanor, pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will bless us, that the covenant of God will be upon us, that the hand of God will be upon us, that God will heal us, God will transform us, God will revive us, God will empower us, God will open up our hearts. We pray for your covering, Lord. Oh, Lord. Now our 
our prayer goes to all of you. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being blessed. We bless God for your lives. It is my prayer that from today, we will all be worshippers, true worshippers. People that serve God. People that work for the Lord without any complaints. People that God uses to break the holes of the enemy over the lives of people. Amen. God bless each one of you. We do love you. To the heavens, Jesus be the saint. God bless you all. All about you. Yes, it's all about. We thank you, Jesus. In, in the next one minute, we are ending the video. I want you to talk to God. There is something you are believing God for. In such an atmosphere, just ask God. Whatever you are believing God for, just ask Him to do it for you. Say, Lord, do it for me, Lord. Deliver me from every hold of the enemy, Lord. Provide for me, Lord. Father, prove to our enemies that you are God. May we not be at the mercy of people. May we not be the laughter of men. Jesus, may they not question where is their God. There is this one thing you must do for us, Lord. Jesus, be merciful to us. We may not deserve it, but for your name's sake, may you do it for us, Lord. May you open those doors for us, Lord. Bless us, Lord, so that everybody will know that Jesus did it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God, I want you to read Psalm 42, verse 2, and we'll close with it. Psalm 42, verse 2, it is our prayer. Psalm, Psalm 42. Yes. The water is on my soul. Psalm 42. Psalm 42, okay. verse 2. Okay. Um, verse 2. Yeah. My soul test for God. Yes. For the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My soul thirst for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet my God? When you worship Him, when you serve Him, you meet God. Because you are my strength, my shield. You alone be my spirit. Somebody just talk to God. Say you alone. You My soul tests for the Lord, for the living God. Where can I meet this God? When I worship Him, when I serve Him, I will meet Him. My soul, say Lord, You alone make my spirit. Yes. You for the Lord
mais bem, mais cheio. I want to stop the video, but for some reasons I'm not able to stop it. This is true worship. When you have a revelation about what worship is, it's heavy to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Father, I bless you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. <laughs> Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for what you have done. I pray that, Lord, you bless each one of us. Help us to understand true worship. Help us to be worshipers. From today, we rededicate our lives to you. We rededicate our ministries to you. We ask in the name of Jesus, Father, glorify yourself. That what we will do, whatever we will do, from this new lifestyle of worship, Whatsoever we will do will be to glorify your name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have prayed. And the church say, Amen. 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 God bless everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless everybody. God watch. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye bye.